heard about the adventures of Buzzy Bear and Peggy Penguin? Well, then listen closely, and I'll tell you all about them. You see, Buzzy and Peggy lived way up at the North Pole, and they used to watch the aeroplanes flying overhead. And Buzzy would watch and sigh, and watch and sigh. Gee, where's Peggy? Why can't I join the Air Force? I'd never let my plane fly off its course. Oh, Buzzy, you know the reason why. They say you're too young to fly. But I'm strong and brave. I'd never be afraid. Oh, Buzzy, I think you're the bravest flyer anywhere, even if you can't get up in the air. You do? Uh-huh. Then there's just one thing for me to do. Whatever it is, Buzzy, I'll be with you. So Buzzy and Peggy made their plans. They thought and thought, and suddenly they got an idea. It was almost dark when they started out. Mother and Daddy Bear and Mother and Daddy Penguin thought Buzzy and Peggy were safely tucked away in their beds. Ah, little did they know. Hey, Peggy, Peggy, I'm coming. Buzzy, what are we going to do? Can you keep a secret if I tell you? Cross my heart and hope to die. Well, you and me, we're going to fly. And where were Buzzy and Peggy going? Why, way down to the USA. Buzzy was sure they'd let him join the Air Force, so they sneaked over to the North Pole Airport, and they stowed away under a seat in the plane that was headed for New York. My goodness! What do we have here? Stowaways, that's quite clear. Suppose you tell us what you're doing here. Oh, we're going to New York, down in the USA. I'm going to be a flyer. No matter what my folks say. We're in a storm, that's plain to see. And a rough one it's going to be. I'd better get back to the controls and fast. Gee, how long do you think it's going to last? Oh, no telling, son, how long it'll be. I'll give you a hand if you'll let me. The pilot was in a tough spot, and he needed help. So Buzzy followed him into the cockpit and did exactly what Pilot Jim told him to do. Oh, but things look black for Flight 12. What's the altimeter say? Ground's 4,000 feet away. Okay, stand by. We're climbing. Together, Pilot Jim and Buzzy worked to bring the plane through, and finally they did. The thunder had stopped. The rain was over. The sky was growing blue. Well, that was the worst storm I ever flew through. Uh, I was sure you'd make it. I just knew. You'll be a real flyer yourself someday. Sure he will, as soon as we find the way. I'm supposed to report every stowaway, but I'll give you a chance. Just one night and day. Come on, Peggy. Let's get on the way. Peggy stood all alone in the big city. Peggy thought maybe they ought to ask a policeman about where Buzzy should go to join the Air Force. But Buzzy said no, not yet. He had relatives in New York, and it wouldn't be nice not to look them up first. They lived in a place called the Central Park Zoo. So Buzzy and Peggy started out to look for them. They walked and walked, and finally they discovered how to get to the zoo. Now, Jimmy, you behave, or we'll turn around and go right home instead of to the Central Park Zoo. Peggy, Peggy, did you hear what she said? Uh-huh. We've got to follow the lady in red. And that's just what they did. They followed her right into the zoo, and that's when things started happening. Gee whiz, Buzzy, where do you think your folks will be? Just wait a while, Peggy, and then you'll see. Oh, look, they're over there, Uncle and Auntie and Teddy Bear. Buzzy and Peggy struggled and pushed their way through the crowds, and sure enough, there they were. The uncle and aunt that Buzzy hadn't seen since he was a tiny little boy. Buzzy couldn't figure out why they wanted that big iron fence around their house. But it wasn't long before he and Peggy discovered the terrible truth. Uncle Ted, Uncle Ted, look over this way. Quiet, Buzzy, careful what you say. Gosh, Uncle Ted, aren't you glad to see me? This is bad, Buzzy, bad as anything could be. Now just get back into the shadows and do what I tell you. Uncle Ted, you know how we got to New York? We flew. You've got to get out of here quick, son. You don't know what you've almost done. Then Uncle Ted told them all about the zoo and how they were almost like prisoners. They couldn't leave now, even if they wanted to. Of course, all the people came to see them and admire them, and they were famous. 
But they'd never, never be happy. Buzzy and Peggy had better leave, they said, quickly. And then it happened. Hey, Nick, how do you like that? A couple of animals trying to run away. Yeah, and the boss was warning us just today. Hurry, Buzzy, you and Peggy run. Living in the zoo won't be any fun. Come on, Peggy, let's go this way. Oh, Buzzy, they'll try to make us stay. And then started a mad chase. Buzzy and Peggy ran as fast as their little feet could carry them. They'd just hidden behind the lion's cage to catch their breath when Mr. Lion leaned over and whispered some advice. Hey, kid, you see the baby carriage over there? Baby carriage? No. Where? Just behind you. Climb in, quick. I don't see him here, do you, Nick? No, nah, looks like they got away. We'll see, Peggy. It's okay. Yes. Mr. Lion had saved Buzzy and Peggy. They sat there in the baby's carriage, and everybody who saw Buzzy and Peggy thought they were the baby's toys. And when they were safely out of the zoo, they jumped out and started to walk again. Buzzy and Peggy walked and walked. The sky was growing darker, and their tummies were growing hungrier. Just then, a policeman saw them and walked over. Well, what do we have here? A couple of lost kitties, I fear. Oh, no, sir. We're not lost. Honest, we're not. I want to be a flyer. An awful lot. We're so tired and hungry and, oh, sleepy, too. Just about the hungriest people you ever knew. I guess maybe I could help you out once I know what this is all about. So the friendly policeman took Buzzy and Peggy to his house, gave them a wonderful supper, and let them play with his dog, Lucky, who had the longest ears and the wagonest tail you ever saw. Oh, he's just about the nicest dog I ever met. Well, you three have a rump. I've got things to get. The policeman fixed a real party for them with two big helpings of chocolate cake. And then he saw Peggy's eyes were closing, and Buzzy was yawning. So he tucked them in bed and turned out the lights, and left Lucky to keep them company. Then he closed the door behind him and went out. Hey, Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Wake up, won't you please? Now be quiet. Don't you eat and sneeze. What's the matter, Buzzy? What's wrong? We've got to go. We shouldn't have stayed so long. But why shouldn't we? He's going to help us out. He's calling the police station right now. And I bet I know what about. Buzzy told Peggy that the policeman wanted to send them back home in the morning before he had a chance to join the Air Force. He just didn't understand. So they tiptoed to the door. Can we get out without him seeing us? Oh, sure we can, if we don't make a fuss. They leaned over Lucky to make sure he was asleep, and then they started out. Once the policeman stirred, and they held tightly to each other. Another few inches, and they'd be at the door. And just as they got out, Lucky woke up and started to bark. Oh, I'm surprised that you let them run away after I told you I wanted them to stay. Keep down, Peg, and watch out. Well, now they've got away without a doubt. Gee, Buzzy, can we go? Yeah, I suppose so. So Buzzy took Peggy by the hand, and they tiptoed out into the street. And guess what they discovered? The whole city was looking for Buzzy Bear and Peggy Penguin. Not only the whole city, but the whole world. Oh dear, what would happen to them now? It was night now. Buzzy and Peggy stood all alone on the sidewalk and looked around them. And they began to wish they were back in their own little beds. Maybe they should not have run away after all. And then they discovered something that really frightened them. Extra! Buzzy Bear and Peggy Penguin disappear from North Pole! What they wanted for? Something they stole? Golly, the whole world's looking for them, too. Wouldn't want to be them, would you? Oh, Buzzy, there's a policeman looking this way. If he talks to us, what'll we say? Buzzy didn't worry about the policeman. He just grabbed Peggy by the hand and ran. Everywhere, they heard news about their running away from home. People were reading about them in the newspapers and hearing about them on the radio. Will they put us in jail, do you suppose? 
We better hide someplace where nobody knows. Mother and Daddy must be kind of sad. I'll bet mine are awful mad. Buzzy and Peggy tiptoed over to a house and listened through a window to a radio. And they didn't even hear their friend, the nice policeman, coming up to them. And do you know, Buzzy and Peggy didn't understand that policemen are here to help us. But guess what they heard on the radio? Buzzy, dear, and Peggy, too, wherever you may be. Nobody in the world loves you as much as we. If you come home, you'll find a grand surprise in store. Something that's never happened ever before. Gee, what do you suppose it could be? Maybe we ought to go back home and see. Just then they saw the policeman. They knew it was mighty serious to run away from home. But this once they weren't going to be punished after all. The police were looking for Buzzy and Peggy because none other than General Icicle himself of the North Pole Air Force had asked them to. And he wanted to make sure that Buzzy and Peggy were on the plane when Pilot Jim flew back to the North Pole. But you will never guess what happened. As General of the North Pole Air Force, I appoint you, Buzzy Bear, Captain of the Buzzy Bear Junior Air Squadron. And you, Peggy Penguin, Captain of the Peggy Penguin Junior Flying Nurse Squadron. We count upon you two officers to live up to the squadron pins. I now pin on your uniform. And that's how Buzzy Bear and Peggy Penguin joined the Junior Air Squadron and the Junior Flying Nurses Squadron. And they promised faithfully never to disgrace their squadron pins and never to run away from home again.